Welcome back to a new episode of Art at Home. My name's Meg and I'm here at Gippsland Art Gallery. For this episode, we will be making some stenciled or um, ripped paper stenciled landscape paintings. For our stenciled landscape today, we're taking inspiration from the John Leslie Art Prize and Winter. The John Leslie Art Prize is a painted landscape prize. This year, we had 50 finalists um, that were selected from over 400 entries. Every artist on exhibition has chosen to explore the subject of landscape in a completely different way, and I find that really interesting. For our sponge painted landscape today, we, we're going to use an old piece of sponge that's a bit damp, um, some paint brushes, three uh, tones of blue. So I've mixed a little bit of black with the dark blue and then the medium blue, just a little bit of white. And then the last one, mostly white with just a little bit of blue. So you might like to experiment with mixing different tones yourself. Um, we've also got some black ink in here and some A3 paper. For our stenciled landscape today, we're going to create a stencil from ripped paper. I'm using newspaper. And we just want to make some, I guess, mountain-esque kind of shapes out of that. You'll notice that the newspaper rips one way much easier than the other way. I'm just gonna work my way along, letting the fibers decide a little bit, but also forcing some lumpy shapes in there as well. There we go. That's my first stencil there. So your first stencil you want to place uh, one third of the way down, like so. And then you're going to use your dampened sponge to pick up the lightest tone that you've made. And you're gonna to have to hold down the paper as you dab the paint over it. and take your time to fill up the entire page. Now we want to move on to our next colour, but before we do, we want to change change the mountains just a little bit, or you can swap a stencil with somebody else. So I'm going to rip some more paper out there. interesting shape that I'm going to use. You might even want to, want to flip it around. So the second stencil we're going to go from halfway, roughly halfway down the page. I'm going to place that there. Pull it down. And we're going to use the medium blue that we made here. Starting along the top again. So um, we're ready for our third colour now. I've chosen blues because I thought when I think about winter, I think about cool colours. So that's why we've chosen blue for this. And as, as we move out with our mountains, it's getting lighter and lighter and that's giving a sense of atmospheric perspective. So if you have a look out into the distance, things kind of lose a bit of detail and they get a bit lighter out in the distance. So next time, you're near a mountain range, check that out. It's a very interesting effect. So now we're on to the last colour. 
I'm gonna rip some more mountains out. So this is our last stencil. We're gonna pop that over the top at roughly one third. I'm saying roughly because it's not a straight line. So we just have to kind of, maybe I'll flip it over so it's more in line with that one. That looks good. We're gonna come at it with our darkest blue now. Starting at the top. the base of our sense of landscape. So with quite a wet sponge and um, lots of lots of water in it and just a tiny bit of paint you can start to dab into the sky there to make some clouds. You could also make a mini stencil for the clouds if you liked. I might, I might do that now. A bit trickier to rip paper on a smaller scale. So I can show you what it will look like. Just, just want to rip a tiny bit out to make a cloud shape. Something like that might work well. Just need to round that corner off. There we go, put that aside. So you can use that as a stencil with your sponge that's quite wet with just a little bit of paint or you could freehand, freehand the clouds onto there. And all you do is dab, dab, dab. They're going to be quite light, but still very effective in the sky here. Okay. For the final touches, we're going to add some trees using ink. And I'm going to make them quite spindly with no leaves because this is a winter landscape after all. And the tree at the front here I'm going to draw quite or paint quite big because it's closer to us. That will help our perspective as well. If I'm painting trees up here I'm going to paint them quite a bit smaller. So you need, might need a smaller brush as well. If I was painting trees up the very back here I might only just paint very little lines don't need much detail at all in the background there. And you can keep adding to that. You might like to add some animals or some more trees. It's completely up to you. Sometimes works really well and there's not much ink left on the brush then you can, you can get those really scratchy interesting lines. Okay, might add some more up here. You definitely need a thinner brush <laughs> I'll make it work. Balance it out. And I'm painting these black because where the light source is behind an object and the light is quite low, it creates this silhouette, which is really interesting to look at. So when the sun's setting, if you see a tree in front of a landscape and the sun's behind it, it makes this interesting effect. Here we go. You could add some birds if that was your thing. Here we go.
thank you for joining me for this episode of Art at Home. If you create your own stenciled landscape, please hashtag Gibbs Art at Home and share it with us.